uh, HbA1c or glycosylated hemoglobin is a test that measures the glucose values over the past three months. It is the amount of glucose that is attached to the hemoglobin in the blood. And since the, the red blood cell in the blood lives for about 90 days or so, over the course of 90 days, how much our glucose was in the blood gets attached to this hemoglobin. And when we measure this HbA1c, it gives an overall picture of what the glucose has been over the past three months. It is a very important test both for diagnosing diabetes and also for understanding how much the diabetes is under control at this present time and also to give an idea of what is the risk of the diabetes causing future complications such as kidney problem, eye problem, nerve problem, heart attack, stroke and so on and so forth. So when your doctor asks you to do a HbA1c when you are being first diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, if the HbA1c levels are 6.5 percentage or more, that gives him one extra evidence to tell that you have diabetes. It just by itself is not a lot. He also has to check at your fasting blood glucose, two hours after blood glucose, and then come to a conclusion if you have diabetes or not. And later when you have been diagnosed with diabetes and he starts you on treatment, either with lifestyle changes such as diet and exercise or with medications or a combination of both, he may follow you with the test HbA1c test every three to six months. And if the HbA1c level is less than seven percentage, for most people it means the glucose has been under a good control. And it tells us doctors that your chance of the above mentioned side effects such as complications such as heart attack, stroke and kidney problems will be less. Whereas if your HbA1c is say 8% or 9% or more, for every percentage of HbA1c more than that 7%, your risk for those things goes up. And it also tells us that your glucose has not been under control. It gives an overall picture and since the fasting sugar or a random sugar or a postprandial or a after two hour after meal sugar just gives a snapshot of what your glucose is. This HbA1c also gives an overall picture and guides us more towards how to modify your treatment. Diabetes is a disease that has multiple causes. You know, uh, genetics plays an important role. Your family history plays an important role. Your physical activity plays an important role. The environmental you live in, both air and noise pollution and light pollution can cause an effect on whether you get diabetes or not. Your body weight can uh, have a say on whether you have diabetes. Which part of the world you come from also tells you whether you get have a risk of developing diabetes or not. So only eating junk food uh, or, or, or that alone does not make one prone for diabetes. But when you eat junk food, you tend to add on more calories, extra calories that than your body needs, and it may lead to deposition of unnecessary fat inside the body, especially in the liver, around your intestine, close to your pancreas and so on and so forth. So what it does is eventually over a period of time, the insulin that's secreted in your body is not able to uh, work efficiently as it used to be. So eating junk food will lead to an increased risk of developing diabetes, but that alone is not a risk factor. 